Oh, I didn't see you there. Oi, mate, it's me, 21 Savage. I got three Baruch builds for you today. Okay, first build is going to be for mid-tier content. Nothing too crazy going on here. Um, we got Transient, Vitality, Streamline, Continuity, Intensify, Stretch, Fleeting, and a level 3 overextended to get 200% range. 200% range is the minimum range needed to get 360 degrees on Elude. Also, um, Streamline and Fleeting Expertise. On Baruch, it's weird because you have to actually max out your Fleeting and only use like a rank 8 or rank 9 streamline to get the max amount of efficiency with a prime continuity. Yes, it's weird, believe it or not. But this will actually somehow give you 63%, even though the duration sucks. Um, yeah. Use Grace and Guardian to have a little bit more tankiness to you. You have some power strength in there, have a lot of range for CC. You can pretty much keep your loot up at all times. Low. Um, yeah, it's pretty good CC, sick duration, a lot of builds say use, use a less duration so you can spam it a lot, yeah, that's pretty good, at higher ranks though, I would not use this build whatsoever, I probably would get smacked and instantly die, but Desolate Hands, um, it only costs 19 energy, radius, a little bit high, and when you usually loot with this, it actually doubles the range for, I think, LOL and Desolate Hands. Well, I don't want to say I think, but I know it doubles the range for Desolate Hands. That would actually be 24 meters. So it's going to be all sorts of daggers flying out. Keeping your um, restraint all the way down at all times. So you can just use Serene Storm. But enough talk. Let me show you the build versus these corp I mean these corrupted bones. First thing I'm gonna do, cast Elude. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cast Desolate Hands. Now we're gonna get um, really effed up. Now they can't even touch me. I'm gonna head. Ooh, look at that. Little flowers. Once again, this is like from um, not end game, so. But the only thing about Elude is it's only um, good against projectile attacks. It actually doesn't do anything versus. Uh, like bombard missiles, so if you get hit by that crap and your in your um third ability's not on whatsoever, oh, you're probably gonna die. I mean, it's not a bad build. It's not a great build. Now to restrain it a little bit down. I'm going here real quick. Put a little pummel action on them, you know. You know. Okay, so as I said, this is not for the end game type stuff. I'm going to show you why. Because, let's get some, um, let's do something unrealistic. Let's get 10 bombards. This is just for like, let's just say a stray bombard missile flies towards you. I'm going to try to um, simulate like one flying towards me and killing me. Let's say I have no desolate hands on, and I'm dead. <laughs> See, like if you're in a tight quarter and hits a wall or something, the AoE is going to kill you. But if I have some daggers on, with this little build, it's going to start disarming them pretty quick. That's pretty good. Got not resistant versus any knockdown. Still taking a lot of damage because the daggers just fly out so much. You can also use a lull. So, I mean, it's an alright build. You just have to kind of spam all your abilities at all times. You only have 10 daggers with this build. It could work, um, but you have to spam your abilities constantly. So yeah, that's that little build. I should probably show you the melee before we even get on. I'm going to show you the melee build because this is like bread and butter right here. Dude, how is he attacking? I thought I disarmed this dude. What's going on here? All right. Um, I think you need like, yeah, four former for this one. Basically, um, I think it came with one. Oh, yeah, it came with a D polarity, I think. A D and a V? Yeah, it came with a D and a V. I took out that D polarity because I was like, come on, dude, let's be real. The only thing you know with D polarity is freaking life strike and drifting. And if you're crazy, you might do healing return. Or shattering impact if you really want. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, though. So, 
when I took out the D, I put in the V, put in the V, put in the V, and then I put in um, dash. Or I, I should I say Naraman in the uh, Vans and Madurai, yeah. But uh, that's all I got to do. Basically, this is versus the armored, uh, corrosive. We have virulent, prime reach, very important. It, re it increases the range on the spin attack by like eight meters, I think, or something like that. It's crazy. Condition overload, so you can do a little bit more damage whenever like there's a status proc by like your teammate or something, or like you proc something. Um, of course, more melee damage. Of course, that. Now, Berserker, I use this because the crit chance is already 50, and that's going to make you hit 75% instead of with Prime Fury only 55. So you're going to be hitting 25% faster. Or no, 20% faster, yeah. And of course, we're going to shatter more crit damage. Of course, mm, that's going to be it. Of course, you got to have Prime Fever Strike for that 11k times 3, so that's 30,000. First Corpo Bombs, we're going to be using the gas build, the gaseous build. Um, pretty much the same thing, all I did was change out Volcaic to Volcaic Edge. And yeah, all I do is switch that out. If you don't know how gas works, gas works based on uh, more toxin damage in a gas. So that's why you put on more toxin than heat in any sort of gas build. So that's that. Let me show you the second build real quick. This is if you don't have any umbral mods, because this build right here is pure umbral. This build right here, no umbral mods. You haven't done the quest yet, no problemo. You don't have any arcanes yet, no problemo. It's still gonna work. I mean, partly. I mean, if you don't have any of the arcanes or any of the umbral mods, I'm not even sure how you have adaptation at this point. But hey, screw it. We're going right into it. Um, I think you see the numbers. I think you see what's going on here. I want to have some sort of tankiness using the third ability with the rage so the enemies hit me I gain energy because the efficiency is bad and the duration is even worse but hey we have a lot of daggers in this build screw it so this build is going to be based more on um, the daggers bada bing bada boom okay 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 He's hitting me, he's hitting me a lot. Getting hurt kind of, sort of. Um, can always pass that, and slow him down. Oh, he's really trying to kill me, huh? Oh, can I get like one good shot? I've never procced Puncture with the Dread this much in my entire life. I think it's like as low as the impact, like the dudes are still uh, somehow getting me. Makes no sense, but okay. We got 33 seconds duration. Um, Freaking terrible. One good thing about this build is like this is extra strong now because you got all that strength. So now I think the spin does um, something like almost 20,000 times 3. No, oh, let's see. Yeah, 20,000 times 3. The only problem is, yeah, you're gonna barely use it because you have terrible um, efficiency and duration. So, can you go on to the next build? This build is kind of like, and you may use it, you may not. Let's go on to my favorite build, Grace Guardian, of course. All three of the Umbral mods all maxed out, of course. Enemy Radar, I think you'll be noticing on all these. I should have put it on this one, I don't know why I didn't. Because I like to see what the enemies are. Um, Rage again, Adaptation again. Um, Prime Vigor and Augur Secrets. You want to have some strength in there, you want to have a little bit more health. Because now look at those numbers, boy. Everything is an improvement besides the strength. Doesn't matter though, because we have 15 daggers. We have um, six chances of 90%. And then we have a six meter radius. And six meters, I think, is like right there. Oh no. So enemies would have to be that close for the daggers to even fly out. And since you're not going to be losing elude on this ability, it won't actually double the range because if you ever use elude, it's going to double the radius of this. And many builds will say, just use um, narrow minded to fix that. Dude, don't want narrow minded. Just don't do it. You're going to you're gonna put down the range and then you won't have any CC for your second ability to also get back your restraint. Don't listen to the wiki for once. Alright, so uh, that's the build. Let me test this bad boy out so I can show you the ultimate spank. 
ultimate spanking tank. Now these bums are going to be shooting me. They don't they won't even know what to do. They're like, oh snap, this guy is not dying now. Crazy how that happens, right? And if you're like, oh no, I'm getting hit a little bit too much. It just hits your second ability. And they all fall asleep. Yeah, that's pretty tight if you ask me. And it's for an even longer time this time. 100% of the duration. That thing is like... Um, I think it's like... Um, 25 seconds or so. And I think he should be done. Oh, there's still one more dude. Oh. Well, I think you get the point. It's pretty much a pretty tank and spank type thing going on. It wasn't as much for the desert winds this time. It goes down by 6,000. Still the same deal though. Um, a little bit less damage, more tankiness, more range. So I think this is the best overall Baruch I can think of. Because you have your tankiness. You have somewhat of an efficiency thing going on. Except at lower levels, but at lower levels you won't even die anyway because you're, you're such a freaking boss tank, you won't even need to use abilities that much. And if you do get hurt, rage kicks in and you can use your abilities after that. So, it all pretty much works out. See, that's pretty much it with Baruch Obama. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah. Next video, I'm going to be showing you how to get a tuxedo in Warframe. Yeah, you heard it first. So yeah, peace. Oh, snap, wrong, but...